submitted for October 20th and November 5th, uh, 11th, 2015. Looking for a motion. Let's take each one separately. First, I'll ask the October 20th minutes. I make a motion to approve the October 20th minutes as submitted. Okay, moved by Mr. Gillette and Mr. Freeman, do you second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Looking for one on November 11th, the minutes for November 11th, 2015. I'm not going to vote on this because I wasn't at that meeting. I'm not going to vote on either. Okay. So we have a motion. I make a motion to accept the minutes from November 11th as submitted. Okay. <coughs> Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Payment of invoices. We have the October 15th disbursement report as submitted. Uh, I'm going to ask that we just break out the item on page 33. There's one for the North Smithfield Middle School Cross Country Booster Club. I wasn't able to start the least part about it, but um, my daughter ran that meet, so I'm just going to not vote. I'm not going to vote on that one. So I'd ask that we could vote on everything. I'd ask that we could vote on everything but that item and then vote on that second item. Again, item on page 33, and I'm going to recuse from that. I had a couple of questions on it, but um, Mrs. Markoff's not here to answer them, so I'm not sure. Alicia, can you go ahead? Do you want a motion first before we ask questions? Yeah, I'd ask for a motion to everything excluding the. Unless you're trying to talk about the question. I think we're going to ask. No, she wasn't going to cross-cut. No, we have, to, we have to do the motion. We have to do the motion first, then we ask questions. I'll make a motion that we approve the first contest. Except for the North Country. Except for the Cross Country item on page 34. 33. 33. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So now discussion. I just had two questions. Uh, there's an item for textbook reimbursements to Mrs. Milner, and I just wondered, where is textbook uh, reimbursement? Where does that figure into the budget? That's on page two. It's for $629.79. Um, she purchased textbooks that could not be purchased through a normal vendor, so she had to use her credit card, and that's why she's being reimbursed. Um, and they are Spanish textbooks, so I don't, I'm not really sure what you're looking for. I'm just wondering if it's in the budget. I thought it was unusual that a teacher was reimbursed, being reimbursed for textbook purchases. It, it probably was in the budget. Um, I would have to look at last year's budget for that specific school. It's on page two. It was a check to Mrs. Linda Milner for Spanish textbooks. I was just curious why a teacher would be reimbursed for textbooks. Sometimes, um, like the place that Amazon will take a PO either, we will, somebody will put it out on their personal credit card or check card and be reimbursed. We would reimburse them out of the textbook line in the budget, but the teacher who paid would be the vendor and that's why they would get the check. Thank you. You're welcome. Page three, very bottom. This is Jersey for seven hundred and sixteen dollars and twenty two cents. And there's another one at the very top of page four. Page Am I missing that? Male Augusta Velocity Jersey. On page three. I'm on page three. I don't have that on. I don't have that on. Buses, 
Why are we incurring eight to ten thousand dollars of <coughs> overtime every month? That's more than it was last year. So we are in our contract with DACO, we are allowed four hours per bus per day. And at this time, we are going over the allotted amount per run. So we didn't make any contractual adjustments because that was the situation last year. And last year, the reason was the, uh, that uh, first student said that the routes were shorter than they actually proved out to be. So we didn't make any corrections to the budget for this year, so we're paying overtime charges? No, we, we did increase the budget um, for this year, but I, I'm not sure that they went back and actually um, talked about the contract. We have we've initiated conversations. We're waiting for a response. When we pay overtime, do we pay time and a half? It's set in the contract. I believe you have a copy of the contract and the explanation of the overage, and including the rate of the overage. So it's more than the regular ed overage? I'm not it's saying that it's uh, more than regular ed. It's a, it's a rate. I think it's 40. I believe it's 43, yeah. Yeah. but I have to check the rate. But we have all the data on it. <laughs> When's that contract Um. Have the routes changed? Because I'm just surprised that the monthly rates are higher than they were last year. You know, we were running I guess, like six, I guess this is, um, I'm a little confused, Mr. Chair, because you used to have a protocol where, um, you know, people would, would kind of send their questions or ask Lisa before the meeting. Um, it's kind of tough to answer questions on some 70 pages of random a request, so we'll do our best. All I can tell you, Mrs. Nato, is you had a complete report on more than one occasion on the complete bus contract, um, how the overs occur, um, the bus routes, and, and all of that. So I'm not sure of your question. I'll try it again. Well, I'm just wondering why the rates are, the monthly rates are so much higher than they were last year. So this the is the second year of the contract, and I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at the contract to see if the rates change for the second year. Most likely the rates went up the second year. I know the overage rate um, went up from maybe 40 to uh, a couple of dollars. So um, we have a copy of the contract in the analysis. So it's the best I can do right now. I think now. it's a rate increase versus a, a time increase. Okay, well, I'll one thing. I should, I'm sorry. I'll start a second. Thing. Okay, so, so you look into that and have it. Well, I have, and I've, I've, I've given. Well, Lisa and I have given lengthy explanations, and we'll we will, we will reissue all those documents if necessary, Mr. Chair. I want to address it because when I went in to uh, sign the checks and review the invoices, I asked them to pull the invoices from DATCO, and I did send Lisa an email asking her to reach out to the bus company and get an explanation of the 231 extra hours at $43 an hour for a total of $9,933. They don't even explain, you know, is it on every route that we're running over? Is it on some routes? Is it on regular ed busing? Is it on the in-district special ed budget? And if we're going to be expected to pay close to $10,000 a month in excess over hours, I want a breakdown of it. I don't think we should just take their word for it that it's 231. I'd like them to at least delineate why. And if, it's, if the excess hours are on okay, my All right. We're going to talk about the requests to, the, to, to Lisa later on. If we have a request in. To the chair, Mr. Mr. Chair, the requests have been made from DACO. I believe they've arrived, and out of courtesy to Mrs. Marquardt, I think Mr. Marquardt should review them first, and then we'll pass them on. Okay. Well, you know, I'd like to make a point. My concern is, if if the, if we're running an overage in excess hours on just ten rooms, and the other ten rooms <coughs> are under hours, then I think we need to look at re rooting the district so that we don't run into the excess hours if in fact it's only some of these routes that are beyond the four hours. I think we can avoid the cost if, if in fact it turns out that that's what's happening, then I think we can avoid that $10,000 monthly fee uh, of excess hours if we look at rerouting the routes. So well, I think that is something I asked Lisa to ask. She said she forwarded the request to the bus company. But I'm just leery about signing a check and approving a payment <coughs> for that kind of money when there's not a delineation in very detail. Well, I'm looking for the chair. I'm looking for look at rerouting the route, re looking at the routes. However, as a parent with two kids in the school, I'm concerned sometimes when it's just rerouting based on how I'm finding. There's also some safety issues involved and some timing issues involved with the kids in terms of rerouting. Again, as a parent, speaking not as a, ta as a taxpayer, not as a chance, I'm concerned about that. So I'm willing to look at the issue, but I'm not going to make a decision 
a support decision based solely on finances. Sometimes you've got to spend money for the safety of the kids. Well, no, we got to the chair. The chair, if I may. Mean, yes. just, so, just so you know, um, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, we have had um, several meetings with that cope. We're looking at trying to resolve the overage. They're looking at uh, several uh, potential actions that we brought forward. Mr. Mayor has worked with them on um, exactly what um, some possible rooting tweaks might be. So there's a lot of work that's been put into it. We're waiting for a response from them. Uh, the overage request has been made. They've arrived. And once again, out of respect to your chief financial officer, I do believe that Mrs. Marcos is going to be the person. Okay. Let's okay. move on. No, excuse me. No, that's, we're going to move on. Uh, Any other I can't finish. I signed the. I what? I reviewed all the invoices, and I can't offer any other comment, Mr. Solicitor. Is that appropriate? I want. To, well, the chair has made a ruling. You have to follow the ruling unless the majority of the committee wishes to overrule the ruling. Well, I have other questions and comments on these invoices. Which invoices? The same one. The, the, the transportation. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Mark, I thought here. We're going to review it later on. I'm moving the question right we're now. Avoid, we're authorizing payment of these invoices now. Well, how many questions? Let me ask you this. Uh, two. two questions? Um, first of all, with regard to the statement that you made, if the bus routes that are running longer and some kids are transferred to the routes that are running less time. Are you talking to my statement? Wait a minute. No, you're talking to my statement. I'm trying to explain. Are you talking to my statement? Address the question about the finances. Yeah, I don't want to pay the overage, but that isn't the only issue I have with the excess hours. The then what excess, is the other issue? I don't think the kids should be on the buses for two and a half hours if, you know, an average bus route shouldn't be in a, 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 long, a long, if you're paying for a longer bus route, then the kids are riding the buses for a longer period of time than they should in my mind. And if you transfer some of those kids to a different bus route, then everybody will be in buses for less amount of time that we're on that long the bus route. Second question is, the second issue is with the charter school transportation. Um, the state has sent us an invoice for the charter school transportation, and the charter school transportation is supposed to now be paid by the charter school. And when I emailed Lisa about that and questioned her about it, she said she was in agreement with my position that she was going to reach out to the state to find out why we're still being billed for it. So we're being billed and we're paying the bill for money that we don't know the charter school owes. I, I, I heard last year when the charter school re, um, has gradually been accepting a greater portion of the payment that um, in, the, in the final year, the option would be we could either pay it and then bill them for it, or they could be billed directly for it. So I, I just want everybody to be aware, we're paying the bill for charter school out of district, tra uh, charter school transportation, when I don't know that we should be paying that. I think it's the responsibility of the charter school and you know, what's the process going to be going through the state to get reimbursed right. for what we've already paid? I agree with you, and right now they don't have a decision on that. We have a meeting tomorrow morning. I can raise the concern again, but Ride has not come back with a final answer. So currently what we're doing is we're billing, say, Beacon in return for the amount, <coughs> and they have been paying us. So we're doing our best right now to work with them in Ride. Thank, thank, thank you to the chair, if I might. Uh, just, I just need to correct the misstatement. Um, no child is on a bus for two to two and a half hours. That's the total. Correct. Excuse me. I stand corrected. Excuse me. Yep. That's the total length of the bus routes going to include both secondary and, and elementary. I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Do you want to call those in favor? Oh. <laughs> all, all in favor? Oh, anyone else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, okay. I'm not asking. Okay, all opposed? I'm not. Yeah, we have a motion to approve it except for that one item. Okay, aye. Nay. Aye. Yeah, I got it. Mary, could you make a motion as to the, or anyone, um, on page 7 here in the second plot, I'm receiving from the Russell Page 31. That may not be a conflict, but I haven't been able to lease the body, so I'm going to say it. Can I make a motion to approve the cross-country disbursement on page 33? Second. All, All in favor? favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, next up we have the, um, the payment of invoices. No. The money is received. Money received. I'm sorry. Received. Oh, the money. Uh, the, you just did that. The money is received. 
Can you walk in your seat and see what happened? When you received October 25th, 2002, the cash report. I make a motion that we receive the cash receipts as submitted. Okay. Looking for a second? Second. Any discussion? Alicia, this is really September 20th, right? You haven't gotten October yet. If I look at this. No, this is October. Well, this is October's okay. receipts, because usually it's kind of. We're behind, because we're in November. Yeah, I know, but well, I know we're in November, but sometimes you have total money comes late at the end of the month. We get our check from the top almost the, the very last day. Yeah, okay. Yeah, almost the very last day. So when I check it to the state, you It's like the last day, yeah. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, all, uh, there is a motion and a second to accept it in the amount of uh, seven million and change. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Next up, we have the superintendent's report. Uh, superintendent's report. I'm sorry. Yes. It wasn't the seven million. It was the two million, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, two million. million. Seven million. Yeah. Two million. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been. You're right. I'm sorry. It was two million one hundred twenty-six thousand nine hundred thirty dollars and forty-seven cents. Thank you, Mr. Lett. Thank you very much. Superintendent's um, reports. Mr. Chair, um, first off, the school recognition awards, and, and if you would do me the honors of uh, all I read, if you might hand these out. Sure. Thank you. These are. I got it. Yeah, these are the. Um, if you recall, we voted last month on uh, these student, the student council, school committee, school committee certificates of recognition. This is our way to recognize kids who have done very, and teachers who have done various things in the committee in our, in our schools. And this time we have. Um, I'm going to read. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm going to read. So, I know a lot of the kids um, here, so. Yeah, it, it really is an honor and pleasure to start this. This is inaugural, uh, to start inaugural student recognition um, ceremony. So, first, it North Smith Elementary School, we'd like to recognize Madeline Maddie McNeil, uh, Mrs. Santori's grade three classroom, who's receiving uh, <laughs> Maddie happens to be a great role model to her peers. Mrs. Santori looks at Maddie as a leader with her wise choices and persistence. I love that word, persistence. She's also caring, compassionate to others, and always is willing to lend a hand. Congratulations to you, Maddie. <laughs> At Hallowell, we would like to recognize Samantha Austin, Mrs. Perry's grade four classroom, and Mrs. Austin. the Hallowell Reach Recognition Program Award. Samantha is the very first student nominated for this award. Samantha assisted a child in the learning-based classroom during physical education time. She's extremely kind-hearted and empathetic. Samantha is a model to her peers and a Hallowell star. Congratulations to you, Samantha. At the middle school, we have an opportunity to recognize Victoria Thurley, eighth grader at the middle school. She's receiving the Principal's Recognition Award that acknowledges good citizenship. This award is given to a student who demonstrates. <laughs> who demonstrates good citizenship through the following five characteristics, responsibility, courage, honesty, compassion, and respect. Citizenship is an integral part of the middle school's core values and mission. Congratulations to you, Victoria. <laughs> the high school, uh, do we have Zachary Ferra and Tyler Freiberger here? Yes. Uh, they are team representatives and they will accept the student recognition certificates for the United Unified Volleyball Team State Champions. Team members are, who are going to receive the certificates, Samantha Butler, Elena Daniels, Jacob Despirito, Catherine Escada, Ashley Escada, Zachary Ferrer, Caitlin Fringer, Michaela Gamash, Michael Claude, Patrick Burton, Madeline Hanlon, Rebecca Holliday, Kristen Lafferty, Jordan Marchetti, Ronak Patel, Amanda Williams, Tyler Freiberg, Nathan Angel, team manager, and Tejas Batia, team manager. Coaches for the team are Alicia Krenz, 
James Fitzgerald, and Amy Brown. Congratulations to the United Unified Volleyball team. What a great season.